And here we go. The final game of the year for Port Jefferson Baseball. My name is Gabe Zoda, and I am here with your play-by-play. -play. We're going to have a couple special guests, just like we had last game. We're going to have a couple players giving it a try this game. It should be a lot of fun, but like you see on the screen, we're going to have Port Jeff against Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai looking to end their season off with a league title. And poor Jeff looking to salvage up their last game of the year with a win. It would be a really big win. And on the mound for the Royals is going to be James Grunfelder, who he gets his first start of the season. Obviously, his last game as a Royal. So he wanted to start it off on the mound. And so far, throwing two balls to start off Valenti, the leadoff batter for the Mustangs. And like I said, this game's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of emotions flying after it, I'm sure, for the seniors, for the Royals. But while we are here, it's important just to salvage every last moment you can get. As that third pitch pitch is going to be high for another ball. So 3-0 in Gurney's first batter of the game. Not going to get the strike on that one, so he walks. Valenti with four straight pitches. Obviously not the best start for Gruny, but the last time we saw Gruny was against Santa Maritza's in that shorter game because of the weather. But Gruny ended off that inning with two strikeouts. And, you know, he walked the player, but he did get out of the inning without allowing any runs. Just wants to have, have himself a fun day today. And it seems like he's missing outside or inside to the righties. It seems like he's missing there a bunch. So we'll see if he's able to adjust here. Let's see, yeah, with a 1-0 pitch to Bone. They're going to try and steal that runner, Valenti. He's going to be safely at second base with that stolen base. It's going to be a 1-1 count now as Gruny gets his first strike of the day to the second batter, Bone. One one pitch coming in upstairs high for two and one now. He deals, throws that one high there for a third ball. 3-1, danger of walking his second batter in a row here. Uh, and he's leaving a lot of pitches high. Probably not kind of throwing his arm down maybe as he should on that delivery. And the reason why he's not getting it in is that one's going to be fouled off the leg of the batter. So that one's going to be called foul due to that. It's going to be three and two, the count full to Bone. Still no outs here. Runner on second. Mustangs threatening to score early in this one. They obviously want to get off to a quick and successful start here. As that one's going to be popped up back out of play. Dropped it right behind me, about three inches. <laughs> so it stays 3 2. That one upstairs, ball number four once again. So Grooney walking his first two batters of the day. It's time to talk about the rest of the Mustangs order here. They're going to have. Carrera, Caruso, Gali, Rogers, Salvati, Menachino, and then number number nine batter is going to be their second baseman for today. So it's kind of how they're looking. Hoping to be 
kind of set themselves up for their playoff run. That they're going to be going through after the game, after this game. So they definitely want to start off here and get themselves that momentum to propel themselves forward through the playoffs. Well, the Royals trying to play a little bit of spoiler here, not allowing them to build that momentum. As that one's going to be grounded to Luke Filippi. They're going to try to go for the double play here. They get the first out at second base. Aronica not going to throw over to first, but they do get the runner at second. So now the situation is first and third with one out here. First run of the game only 90 feet away, but they are a double play away from ending this one without any problem. So Rago, the catcher for now, is just going to... Let the Royals know of the defense that they're going to be running. And everyone's going to get back ready and set. Like I said, this batter's going to be Carrera. He's going to ground that one through the infield. It's going to get to Abby Rolf. She's just going to throw that in. But a run does score for the Mustangs for their first run of the day. Let's bring the lead to 1-0 to zero in favor of of Mount Sinai. And these games are always fun to watch, the Mount Sinai versus Port Jeff games. No matter who it is, it's you know not that far of a trip at all. A little bit of a neighborly competition. It's always fun to you know watch these sort of games. Now that first pitch. This one to Caruso. Going to be in there for ball number one. So now after that run scored on that single, we still stay with one out here, runner on first and second. But a strike there from Grooney. Makes the count now one and one here. So applying a little pressure on Mount Sinai to get things going as that one's going to be lifted into right field. And Cipriano's not going to be able to make the catch, so that's going to get the runners on the move. Just going to stay, go one base farther. It's going to be bases loaded there. and That's a play that needs to be made from the senior Cipriano there at right field. Getting them, get, getting those outs are really huge. Unable to get it done there. So now we're going to stay with only one out in this inning. And now with bases loaded, Mount Sinai threatening to put on even more runs here in this inning. Not Definitely not the start that Grooney wanted to have. And he hasn't really been getting hit. It's just been his control has been the problem. He hasn't been able to find the strike zone in this game yet. And before the game even started, when he was warming up, he looked pretty solid. But it seems maybe once they put a batter up there, forced him to lose a little bit of control. But he throws a strike right there to make the count now 1-1. One and one. And that one's also going to be lifted in between the right fielder, first baseman, and second baseman. That one's going to drop in there. So because of that, another run is going to score. Now it's going to be 2-0, to zero, Mount Sinai. So Mount Sinai applying the pressure early, looking to put on a bunch of runs here in this first inning. And they're having pretty good success with it so far. So the bases, like I said, stay loaded. The runners weren't too aggressive on that one. Didn't really read it down. Thought that it could have been caught. That one did drop in there, so they only went station to station on that one. Only moved up one bag. That first pitch to Rogers, the number six batter. He's going to foul it off for the first strike. And a couple minutes here, as that one's going to be fisted over towards the first base side. Grooney going to make the play, but a run does score. But they do get finally the second out of the inning, and if that play gets made by Cipriano over there in right field, 
Uh, the inning would have been over right there, but since he was unable to make that catch, we are left here with Mount Sinai getting a third run on the board. First pitch now to Salvati. Going to be in there for strike number one. Second pitch upstairs. If you hear a faint noise here, that's that one's going to be grounded towards Owens. Owens going to fire over to first. They're going to be able to make that play to end the inning, or end that half inning. Mount Sinai does put in three early runs as they go ahead here. 3-0, and now poor Jeff now in their final game of the season, looking to come back, put some response runs. Yeah, it's gone. All right. Luke Flippy up to bat. Number 12. Oh, I'm Jaden, by the way. And we have Matt here by the side. Luke Flippy. Very good batter. Very good player. First pitch. Right in the gap over the shortstop. Second to be a double. Single. Damn, bro. Oh, my God. What? Dan Owens. What number is he? People rooting for him in the back. First pitch strike. Am I loud enough? No, be enthusiastic. Okay. Dan Owens, very good player. Number two batter. Second pitch. Swing and a miss. Own two here. And a ground ball to second. Yeah. And he's out. Looked like he was safe. Luke Flippy on third now. Oh, wait, no, he was safe. Sorry. Runners on first and third here. Let's see if Grooney can take Luke home. Score be three to one. First pitch. Foul. Second pitch. Strike. It's a little inside. Foul ball. Dan went for the steal. I don't think Grooney saw the sign. Grooney's a very good hitter. Third pitch. And he 
gets hit. Easily the most hit person on the team. Gets one every game, sometimes more. Tommy Yost up the bat. Very good walk up song. Let's see what he's going to do here. Something else to say. Tommy with one home run in the season. First pitch. And it's a strike. Second pitch, ball, little inside, low. Third pitch, ball, Luke does not go. <laughs> Two ones account. And a strike, little high. Ground ball in second. Safe on first. Our boy. Luke scores. Dan on third. Gurney on second. Very great hit. Very. Great run. Now the score is 3 to 1. I don't know how to change it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Anthony up to bat. First pitch. Foul ball. How do you change that? Anthony's a very good hitter. Second pitch. Almost gets hit. Count is now one to one. Third pitch. Foul ball. Another foul ball. Just don't fuck with it. Leave it. Fourth pitch coming in. Low and inside. Just strike three. That's a good pitch. Just got to swing. Roy Rago up to bat, number two. Our second baseman, so is Joey. First pitch. Roy's a very good hitter, very consistent. First pitch. Swings. Ground ball to third. Out at first. Run scores, though, Dan. Abby's up. Abby's the left fielder. First pitch is a strike. That's high. It's so close. That's a ball. Goody did not go. Goody is not the best person in the world. But, you know, when we're trying to get runs down, got to go. Third pitch. Strike. It's a good pitch. Two outs. Two dives going to do here. Foul ball. Great two strike approach. Wow, 
One and two's the count. A little late on that. Strike three. What's up, everybody? Um, before we had our boy J Cats, uh, Jaden Caceres, and now, um, uh, Matthew Wengatz, um, on the varsity baseball team, and we're about to start our the top. Oh uh, no, yeah, top of the second inning. And uh, over here we got J Cats and Zammer the Hammer, and uh, so here we go. Um, starting off from the last inning, uh. Menachino is starting uh, off for the Mount Sinai Mustangs today right now. And right now, uh, the score is 3-2, uh, Mount Sinai 3, um, Mount Sinai 3, Royals 2. And here we go. Here's the pitch from Grooney. It's a bunt, and Dan rushes in. He can, oh, and, it's, and he uh, just fails to grab the ball. So, I... So, now we got one man on first, no outs, and a very close game so far. And, Frangui, oh, um, uh, number six for the Mount Sinai Mustangs, steps up to the plate. And here's the pitch. It's a great pitch from uh, Grunfelder, and as we refer to him on the team, Gruni. Um, nice strike. Uh, and, so, here we go, here's pitch two. Oh, and the ball gets away in the run, and, uh, Rago, the catcher, uh, picks it up, but not in time as Mr. Menachino steals second. Uh, so, we're here in a very close, like I said before, and, uh, I mean, we, alright, so, I mean, it's just been a very close game, uh, it's, it's, some great stuff from both teams. And a long fly. And it's an out by the left fielder for the Royals. Abby Rolf and uh run and uh Menachino tags up. And so there is no progress. Um but here we are. Um now top of the order, Valenti is back up again. And the Royals are are glad that it's one it's one out and here we are heading back towards hitting again scoring some more runs and here's the pitch a great strike from Grunfelder I mean perfect strike I don't know why the batter did not swing at that it was a right down Broadway as they say um and so right now it's a pretty chillax situation I'd say for the Royals we got oh and a long fly and they're racing for it uh they're running, running, running. Oh my! It's gonna. It looks like it's going to be a RBI double for Mr. Valenti. Um. And so now the score is four to two. Um. Four two. And the next batter, uh, number two. Uh, number fifteen. Uh, steps up to the plate. And uh, we just want to say real quick uh, before this next batter steps in uh, that Gabe, he's a really great guy, super awesome dude. And that also, here comes the pitch from Drooney, and it's very close right now. Four to two, very tight game, lots of athleticism. And R Rory Rago stops a, stops a ball that, had he let it go by, would be a easy stolen base by Valenti. Um, and here we go. Here's the pitch. Grunfelder winds up. It takes the sun. And it's a foul. It's a foul ball into the stands. Hopefully that hit anyone. Make some of our Royals make sure to make sure to check if everyone's okay over there. Don't want anyone hurt and it appears that they are. And so it's a uh, very close game as I keep on saying. Cause it's just there's some great plays, and um, so now we here we got a one-one count, uh, as Mr. Official just stated. Oh, and 
Grunfelder hits um hits our number two battery for the Mount Sinai Mustangs, and so he will take his base. So now we got um one out, uh runner on second and first, and they're probably gonna the Royals will probably try and turn two here, as seeing that a double play could get them out of this inning. Um so Grooney. Uh, if he is shaken by this, he does not show it. He keeps his game face. And Valenti goes on a long fly. Goes back to tag up. Abby Rolf drops it. It's against the fence. It's gonna. I think they're going to score. And Luke Flippy, great job to hold. I mean, Valenti scores because he's just so far out. And another double. Um, but... Yeah. Winning, oh, great job by uh, Luke Flippy to be there for the cutoff and a great throw by Abby Rolf to make sure that we don't, that only one run scores there, not two. So now the score is five to two uh, and only one out still as we uh, as we are in the midst of a very game and the Royals coach will call time uh, and the whole infield will jog in to take a breather. It's, it's starting to get as coach probably wants uh, the coach probably just wants them to calm down and stop and chillax and so it's time out as we come over here um, and just little elevator music in the background as we wait out wait for um our next batter, Caruso, to take some warm-up swings. The officials to to, to uh, wait. Um, and everyone's just kind of taking a breather, you know. Um, the Royals are probably trying to stick in there because they they're not going to give up. And uh, coach starts heading back over, and the all the infielders go to their positions. Uh, Dan number ten to third. Luke Flippy number twelve to shortstop. Grunfelder stays on the mound. Seven, Rago goes back to the uh, behind the dish. Uh, we got Joey Erotica at second, and Anthony Evangelista at first. Roy's and Roy's number two, and Anthony Evangelista is fifteen. Um, and so Grunny waits for the sign. Wheels back to his windup. Caruso looks eager to smack a ball, and Grunny what um. Whips one in, uh, too far outside, low and away, and that'll be a ball. And so, it's, I don't know, the Royals, this is a very close match. The last time the Royals in the Met, uh, Mustangs met up and had a little baseball duel, it was a very close game for the beginning, and then uh, the Mustangs flipped the switch and took away the lead and ended up winning, and now we're back in another ball from Grooney. And so he waits for his sign. Uh, he gets a sign, goes back into the windup. Went for the pitch. Oh, and it's very high. And if and if I if the screen wasn't here, would have hit me right in the face. Um, and the third base uh, on third base, our runner decides to stay, which is probably smart because the ball bounced back because Rooney has a very strong arm. So Caruso's up, and uh, the enthusiastic Royals teammates are cheering him on, and that's just high. So he walks Caruso. Oh, uh, whoops. Um, yeah, he walks Caruso. Um. 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 So our next batter gets up to the plate. Galley. And uh, the Mount Sinai Mustangs are looking aggressive right now. And the batter takes a pitch. Uh, it was good eye. Uh, it was a ball, low and away. And yeah. Um, there. And and there's a a good rip that's driven right past. Dan's glove, Dan the third baseman, number 10, and a run will score um, on a single. And 
and um, so we're it's pretty uh, um, close game and I want to thank uh, teammate Michael Tester for helping me out here and uh, so uh, another run scores and so uh, it's a more runs are scoring now it's seven to two on a stolen base. And so it's a uh, very late on the ball and he rips it foul um, very far, very far foul. And so here we are and the game continues with a extended lead now by the Mount Sinai Mustangs and our batter Rogers will foul it off. Um, it's been a very long inning and the Royals need to get back in the dugout but I mean it's it's just the little things you know like getting the extra step to catch the ball but here's the pitch and the batter turns away from it um, and so he turns away and that's a ball um, so here we go on a 2-2 count uh, Gruden's probably gonna try and throw a fastball here uh, try and end the and at least get another out and he throws a good pitch with some movement on it but it's just not um, able to stay into the strike get into the strike zone and so our count is 3-2 now full count one out situation with runners two, both, two runners in scoring position and here's the pitch and it's fouled back I am not sure what, oh and Grooney catches it makes the out on the pop out uh, it's just a great job. Uh, I mean, it's a good job. Uh, Grooney and uh, Rago almost co almost collide there, but they call the ball and keep it professional. And so now here's our next batter. Um, and so two outs now. Um, we got a 1-0 count as we head to the bottom of the order again. Looks like uh, Salvati is up uh, for the Mount Sinai Mustangs. And uh, Roy is probably eager to get out of this inning at this point. Uh, and the ball gets whacked away. Um, so, here we go. And uh, Rago, um he goes back down into his position and he gives the sign and Grooney approves so here's the pitch and here it is it's a good pitch a strike with excellent movement great pitch by uh, Mr. Greenfelder um, and now it's a 1-2 count so uh, the everyone's excited it's a very very uh, very exciting moment and to see what will happen what's the pitch and it's a ball uh, Gets away from Rago, but uh, he gets there, and Mr. Greenfelder will also head over to the plate to make sure that no runs score. So now we have a 2-2 count. T two balls, two strikes, two outs, and it's the top of the second inning. So, wow. And he fouls it off. Um, and the runner on third tries to steal, and you see that he fouled it off, but... It's, they are ready to steal. They are ready to be aggressive on the base pass, and that they need to take that. As, the Royals need to take that as a wake-up call to be better and like focus up, because it looks like uh, they're all sleeping out there. And Grooney bounces one in the dirt, uh, and so now it's another full count we got here. Uh, full count, uh, three-two with two outs, and this is the deciding pitch right now of this ending if it will continue or end and he golfs one out to the left field and the uh, Abby Roth makes an error and it looks like it'll be another it'll be a two RBI double so now the score is nine to two uh, extending extending the lead for the Mount Sinai Mustangs even more
coach will jog back out, jog back out there to calm down, try to calm down. I'd assume a uh, pitcher, James Grimfelder, as he appears to have, is trying to calm himself down and try and get a set, get the Royals out of the inning. Um, and it's a pretty tense moment. And today is actually the last game, as previously mentioned, last game for the. Um, Royals today, as they were not able to make the cut to the playoffs, and Mr. Manichino, who led off for us this inning, is back up again, and he fouls it off into the back top of the backstop, so that'll be uh, one strike and no balls to start off the count today, and yeah. Alright, and here's the pitch. Oh, it's a strike. And now one more pitch to end the inning here. For, um, can uh, Rooney strike out Mr. Manichino, or will the inning continue again? Oh, it's a very close game right now. Two strikes, two ball, two outs, and it's a ball. Get away from it, and he, the runner goes to third. And it's another stolen base. But right now, all they're focusing on is getting out of this inning. Alright, and so here we go, next pitch, and that's way outside into the other batter's box, but Grunfelder staying strong, trying to get the Royals out of the inning now with a 2-2 count. Um, so, two balls, two strikes, two outs again, and he'll bounce that one in. Uh, good velocity, just needs to get it up a little. Um, and so, we are... Looks like it's going to be another tight inning again. And tight spot. It's a hit right back to the pitcher. And Grunfelder makes an amazing stop. And that will be the end of the top of the second. All right, here we go. Bottom of the second inning here after Mount Sinai putting up a bunch of runs in that top half of the inning. And I hope you guys enjoyed Wengatz and Jaden Katzeros on the mic there. Uh, had to take a little break. Had to go uh, do a little bit of a session on Hofstra Radio. Had to talk about a little NBA playoffs. So now we're back. And, and it's not going to be the last guest we're going to have on today. We're going to have Anthony Evangelista a little bit later in the game. So definitely stay tuned for that. This is going to be a lot of fun. Just having these guys get the opportunity to get behind the mic, you know, get some experience and have a little bit of fun with it, you know. It might not be what they choose to do in the future, but as long as they're having fun, getting themselves some memories, it's all that matters. But Aronica, who's going to start off this inning for the Royals, is going to have a 2-2 count here. And definitely kind of that same presence for Aronica as that pitch, probably to someone a little taller. Probably would have been a strike, but since you're throwing to that small frame, that really small frame of Aronica there, it's going to be high for a ball. So the count's going to be full now to Aronica. Next pitch fouls off, so Aronica able to stay alive in this count. And obviously Port Jeff, after letting up a bunch of runs in that last top, top half of this inning, looking to scratch back a couple here. Uh, and they're definitely in a hole, so you're definitely going to want to see them work these counts into their favor and get on base is that one in there strike number three for the strikeout there on Joey and Joey was the eight batter so now number nine is going to be Frankie D'Elia hitting for Cipriano today big spot for him just want to get on base for Fulibi who had a nice little single his first time up and now Ooh, Delia rockets one over to third, but nice catch made by that third baseman to get that out, and that's going to bring the top of the order back up here. So we're going to have Luke Filippi. At the plate again. Like I said last time, he was up. He started off the Royals' day with a single. Obviously looking to do that once again right here. Takes there for strike number one. Second pitch. That one will be low. So evens up the count here at one and one. I 
next one. Luke lifts that one up into center field. Center fielder getting to it and gets under it. Makes that catch for the outs. And the final out of the bottom of the second. So even though Philippi gave that one a ride, gets caught by that center fielder. And the Port Jeff Royals unable to get anything going there. And they're going to come back to see what they can do on the other side. Going into the top of the third here. Looks like we're going to have the top of the order back up for Mount Sinai here. New pitcher for the Royals. So Groney took his two innings on the mound. But Valenti's going to rocket that one to center field and that slide. Was not able to make a catch was Tommy Yo. So Valenti heads into second base safely with his double. That's a second double of the game for Valenti. So definitely a good start for him. Two doubles and a walk for Valenti, not getting out once in this game. Definitely gonna want to see if that can continue here. Now it's going to bring up Bone, who walked and got a hit by pitch. That time, this time, he's going to rocket that one into right field. Right fielder Cipriano able to make that catch. Valenti get a tag. It looks like that play, actually, that ball actually dropped in front. Oh, he did get the catch. So one out here, runner on third. Poor, uh, poor Jeff already in a position to let up another run here. Definitely not the position you want to be in. But the Royals are not throwing their kind of like A-tier guys, not throwing their big starters here. Because Flippy throwing in the Titans this weekend. And then... So he's not going to pitch. Tommy pitched against Amityville. And then Natty's not here. Because Natty also... Driving down out of state to play in a tournament of his own. So players, as that one's rocketed into left field this time, that one's going to drop by Abby into the field. So it's going to definitely score in Valenti. And then Bone getting his double there. Oh, that was Carrera, sorry, who got that double. Bone flew out. So Carrera able to get his double. To score a run. And the last time these two teams faced up against each other, it was a little bit it was a little bit more close. That one's gonna be ground to Aronica. He's able to make that easy toss over there at the first. The second out of the inning. So obviously they're looking here to not allow in not allow that offensive explosion that we saw from last inning. And Rory doing a good job of playing to contact. Uh, Grooney had a little bit of problems controlling. Obviously that hit parade came in and they were able to do well. Now Rory throwing strikes against these Mount Sinai batters. And doing well. And forcing these guys to make contact and allow the Royals defense to get the outs. Able to get through two outs in this inning. Now hoping to do the same with Golly here, who's had two singles in this game so far. Before I forget, let me change that. Change the score on that one in there for strike number two. Nice pitch by Rago on that one to get that one by. Mount Sinai batter. Let me change the score. 10 2. Perfect. That one. You're going to try to make him fish outside, unable to. It evens up the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. One person on. One person sitting at third base. Pitch comes in. That one lifted into center field. Tommy's going to get on his high horse to make that catch. And he's able to. 
for the final out of the inning. So Mount Sinai only scores one in that half inning. Now we head into the bottom half of the third to see if poor Jeff can scratch back even a little bit. Bottom four here. Owen to start things off. First pitch gets fouled off to that first pitch side. Last inning ended with a really nice hit by Filippi that just got caught in the outfield by that center fielder, making a really nice catch on it. But now starting this inning, let's see if Owens can start us off here. But he's already been taking two strikes. That one clipped the top outside corner for that called second strike. Next pitch, that one lifted into center. Nice contact, but the center fielder going to be easily caught by him. So Owens, even though he gave that one a ride, flies out to start off this inning the exact way they ended last. And now your starting pitcher, now converting over to your catcher now. Gurney back up to the plate. He got hit by a pitch again to bring that average back up to at least one a game. We're not sure exactly how many hit by pitches he has, but it's definitely at least one a game. And uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty th cool thing that you don't see often for sure. You know, could be his stance, the way he you know leaves that elbow kind of hanging out front, or. Could just be that these pitchers just don't like him. I don't know. One of those two. But he definitely gets hit often. Only gets hit, almost gets hit right there again with that inside pitch for ball 3-3-0 three, three, oh, the count here. And this being his last game, if he gets a pitch, you're definitely going to see the green light out of Grooney. Not going to take a swing at it, and that was because it was outside for ball number four, so he takes his base. The Royals get their first base runner of this inning. Obviously down to eight runs. Not a lot of game left. Do have a couple more chances. I definitely want to see them climb back just a little bit into this game. Give themselves a fighting chance here. It's definitely as it is right now. Not looking too bright for this Port Jefferson offense. First pitch to Tommy. Fouled off. the 0-1 pitch from Reichenbach tosses that one in for strike number two. That pitch, nice placement on that one to get the called second strike. O2 pitch now, that one clips the outside corner. Strike three, Reichenbach. Nice, another nice placement on that one to get the strikeout call on Tommy Yost. So that's gonna bring up number 14. Where's number 15 away? But 14 at home. Anthony Evangelista, which we could see on the mic later on in this game. At least that's what we have planned, but we'll see if it comes into fruition here. So we'll see him playing here in the game. We'll see if he's able to perform well both on the field and also in the booth. But his first time out there, he struck out. Now that time, fists it over to the second baseman. He's going to launch it over the first four. The last out of the bottom of the fourth inning. So the Royals put on a runner there in Grooney, but unable to get him anywhere other than first base as we keep this game Deadlocked at 10 to 2, heading into the top of the fifth inning. Now, as we head into, it seems to be, should be top of the fifth here. It's again, once came back, put a little bit of a confusion, but we got the top of the fifth here, and Rory back on the mound. First pitch now to Rogers. Tossed in there for strike number one. Rogers not having the greatest day that he would like to have. Grounded out and popped out, but that time 
going to ground that one to Owens. Owens firing over to first. Evangelista doesn't convert the out because he's off of the bag. It's very unfortunate. And Rosen just going to talk to the umpire to make sure that he was off of the bag. Because he definitely want to get that out if possible. Now he's going to talk over to the home plate umpire. See if maybe the home plate umpire saw anything different. So it seems like after their conference actually give him the out on that one so nice play by the Royals to get out that first batter of the inning with that ground out now it's gonna bring up Salvati Salvati grounded out before and then hit a double so kind of back and forth for him but getting contact in all of his at-bats. We're going to do the same here in this at-bat. Rory, trying to do the opposite. Maybe, you know, Mount Sinai. A little bit to, you know, they're noticing that Rory not throwing as fast as maybe other pitchers they've seen in the, fa uh, in the past. So they're able to kind of tee up on these guys like Rory as Rory throws the 3-0 pitch in there for strike number one. But they're kind of teeing up on these slower guys. Uh, you know, Gurney not throwing that you know, high of a speed. So they're really teeing up and it's kind of why the offense is the way it is. And that one's popped up back and out of play. No one's going to be able to catch that one. Now making the count full 3-2, and the 3-2 pitch coming in, lined to Joey Ronica, and he makes the catch. He didn't even have to move on that one. For the second out of this top, bottom half, or top half of the inning. It's going to bring up number four now, Menachino. That was some really nice contact by Salvati, but just unable to get these, you know, converted as a hit. But now it's going to bring up the smaller guy, Menachino. And the great thing about these Mount Sinai versus Port Jeff games, you definitely get an amazing turnout because you know, since these towns are just a couple steps away almost, you get the parents from Port Jeff and I'd always show up to these home games, get a couple Port Jeff kid fans, you know, supporting their classmates. And on the other side, Mount Sinai, kind of get the same thing because they don't got to take a long trip down here to the field here at Port Jeff just probably a five minute drive so it's not too much of a sacrifice for these guys come down here enjoy the game enjoy some baseball and watch their kids and their classmates go at it here in the beautiful sport of baseball but Rory files, falls 3-0 again in this account, able to fire back with a strike to make it 3-1. But now the 3-1 pitch comes in, and that one's popped up to Cipriano, and he's able to get the catch for the final out of that inning. So Rory doing a good job of holding back the Mount Sinai and getting any runs in that inning. And now we head back to Port Jeff's offense to see if they can fight back, fire across a couple more runs to at least make this game a little bit closer than it is right now. So we'll see what they're able to do when we come back to some Port Jeff baseball. Up now for Port Jefferson, number two, Rory. By the way, we got a switch on the mic here. Anthony, me, Evangelist is coming in. Rory is coming in for Grooney on the mound. Now his first at bat as he takes strike one. 
very good small ball hitter number two is Rory as he takes ball two excuse me ball one counts one and one to Rory let's see what he does with it Ooh, a little hesitation swing called strike I thought it was a little high and inside but let's see what he does in the one and two gotta protect here as he looks at ball two good take good definitely good take And the pitch. And he hits it. Little dribbler to the shortstop. That could be trouble. Feels it nicely. Off the bag. Safe. Safe number two at first base. Next up at bat is a stud. 4-4. Four, four. Abby Rolf. Truly, truly um, a big asset to the Port Jefferson baseball team this year. Let's see. And the pitch. Oh, she rolls from back up the middle. That could be a double play. That's trouble for us. And that's a double play ball they rolled. Two outs for poor Jeff. Hello fans, this is James Kronfeld. I was the starting pitcher today, and yeah, I definitely got rocked a little bit, but it's okay. So, we're going we're gonna to be in here for Joey Ronica. Fouled off. What a hack by the man, Joey. Is it recording? Number one in the box. Oh, one count. Leaves that down for ball one. Joey is the favorite eighth grade on our team by a moonshot. We love Joey. Joey is the hardest working kid I know. Oh, Joey rips it the second. Makes the play, throws it over, and that is the third out of the inning. This is your cameo from James Greenfelder. Have a nice day, everybody. If I had to, I think... I don't know. I think I would love commentating basketball a little bit more just because I'm more of, you know, kind of a lot more energy to it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit harder to commentate baseball because uh, of the pace, but it's, I love it. It's so much fun. I, I just love commentating. Commentating, there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing better than it, to be honest. So Manikino grounded out there. They have their nine batter. Or is this? Or is it not? This is actually Valenti. Okay, so Valenti looking to continue his success at the plate. Walked in two doubles today. Looking to continue it here. See if he can get another one or maybe work on his cycle. Get a triple or a homer. That would definitely be exciting. So the cycle definitely in the cards. As he's going to lift that one over, but not going to be able to be safe on that one as Joey Aronica gets the catch on that kind of lofted hit over there to second base. So doing pretty good here is Rory in, you know, in, in this game. Getting these guys out to pop out, ground out, you know, kind of anything. get these outs and hasn't allowed a bunch of runs only only has allowed one run so far in, in this game so doing very well but now focus goes on to bone here and he's gonna start him off with two high fastballs definitely good way to see him close that pitch get it a little bit down so we can get these strike calls something that he's gonna need just to get through these innings that one outside that time. He got it down, but that one fled a little bit too outside. Once again, that last inning, we heard a little bit of talk from Anthony Evangelista and James Grunfelder, your catcher, and also your first baseman. So, once again, hope you guys enjoyed 
they had to say. And now with two outs, Bone gets on with a walk. Now Carrera gets on with a walk, sorry. Now Caruso gonna step up. First pitch a little bit outside there, but it does get called in there for a strike. So you're seeing kind of how that zone is in play for this umpire. That one a little bit too outside. They're going to try to throw him out on that steal, but Flippy, the athlete, prevents that one with that leap from getting into center field and catches that one. Obviously, runner's going to be safe there at second, but at least Flippy made it look nice as she usually does on that field. The next pitch now, that one also two outside. Three won the count. Up oh, two one actually the count. I was looking at the scoreboard guy who's doing the scoreboard didn't have it right, but seems like we got a fix now. 2-1 with two outs here with a man on second base. That's going to be the situation that we are in. Rory on the mound, deals, tosses that one. That one fouled off far out of play towards that first base side. As we continue to get towards the, the close of this game, just want to remind everyone how much fun this is, uh, how much fun this was for me to be able to put on for, you know, the players as that one's ripped into center field, grounds through the infield. Tommy Yost going to try and make the throw and not going to be able to because he bobbles it and drops it. So that run's going to come in for the 11th run of the game for Mount Sinai as they take an 11-2 lead. Here in Tommy Yost, we thought we were going to get a kind of close call there because we know Tommy has the arm to do it, but bobbled it there in center field. Obviously, this isn't kind of his position that he's used to doing, that center field role. Usually saw him at first base in years past, but not working that center field. Just unable to take care of that. Of that pitch, so... Now we head on to a new batter here. Seems like a balk was called on that batter, or on that pitch. So since the balk was called, runner moves to second base. In scoring position, now two outs. Probably able to keep things going. That one's ripped over towards the first base. Evangelista not able to make that play cleanly, so it gets by him. The run is going to score as well from second base. 12-2. Out Sinai, and it looks like they're just scoring at every possible chance that they get. And you kind of just hope now with two outs, this isn't a situation where Mount Sinai gets something rolling. I hope they can at least end it there to keep the score as clean as it is now. You know, as you know, it's not the best look for the Royals being down 12-2, but you hope kind of stays here since this is kind of what you're dealt with. First pitch in there for strike one for Galley. That one fouled off for strike number two. A Rory with the chance of finishing off this inning as he's 0-2 ahead in this count with two outs. That one lifted up into the air. Cipriano going to camp under it, make the catch for the final out of the inning. So Mount Sinai puts on two more runs, increases their lead from 10-2 to 12-2 to 12 to 2 here. As we head back to the Port Jefferson side, down 10 runs, huge comebacks needed. So see if they're able to push across a couple. 
come back. Bottom five here. Going to start off with Frankie D'Elia in the box. He's going to take that one to left field. Left fielder right under it for the first out of the inning. So quickly going to bring in Luke Filippi, but also going to bring in Tommy Yost for the call for this at-bat. Hey guys, I'm Tom Yost, and we will be calling the Luke Filippi, aka the franchise. The franchise is at bat today. First pitch, he deals. That's a drive. That's a deep. Center field. Got the wall. It's gone! Out of here! The franchise, Luke Filippi, with his second home run of the season. He overtakes me. Back to Gabe Zoda. And that one was absolutely smashed as soon as he hit that one. The whole world knew that one was gone. So Luke Filippi, like Tommy said, his second home run of the year. And he <laughs> took that one to deep center. Once, I, uh, once again, that one was absolutely shot, no doubter, as soon as that one left the bat. He's going to bring up Owens now. And first pitch, he's going to loft that one over to the second baseman. He's going to be able to make that catch for the second out, but at least with that run coming in, you know, you see some positive things from the Royals to end off this season. And obviously, a look ahead into the future of this poor Jeff Royals team. And now, for one of his final at-bats, James Grunfelder into the box here. Definitely wants to get his first homer of the season if it's possible. But now 2-0 the count to him. They appeal over to first to see if maybe he swang, but not the case. Next pitch coming in. That one's ripped into left field, down the line. That's definitely going to go for two bases. Gruny rounds around first, goes to second in there safely with a double. Get some positive things here from these older players of the Royals. And now Tommy Yost stepping in. And now Wengatz going to take the call for Tommy Yost at bat. Hey, guys. It's Matt. I'm back. Uh, thanks, Gabe, for letting me do Yost. Uh, oh, and uh, Groon appears to have a, had a double. He's having a pinch runner, uh, Kieran Laffey. And he's pretty quick kid, pretty fast. And here we are. Uh, pretty big moment now for the Royals to get hyped up. As uh, Luke Flippy just bombed the home run. And oh, and he hits a little pop up. Right, let's see what'll happen. Will he make it? And they just appear to get it. And that's the end of this inning. So here we go into the top of the sixth. Mount Sinai versus Port Jeff. Top six, back at it again. After that pretty eventful bottom half of the fifth. We're gonna have Rogers stepping in. Grounded out, popped out, and grounded out again. That one's nosed over there towards Filippi. Filippi, after hitting that big home run, gets that big out. He'll be doing it all on both sides. Exactly what we're used to seeing from number 12. So now that'll bring up Salvati here, who lined out to Aronica there in that last at bat. First pitch now into him, lofted low for ball number one. Next pitch, ooh, gets Salvati to swing through that one. Salvati was looking for a big hit there. Got a little bit too anxious, swung a little bit too early on that slower pitch. He tips that one into the glove for strike number one. Next one, fouled off to the backstop. Strike number two now to number nine. I have to comment on something here. Mount Sinai's got some pretty cool jerseys. 
They got like a different kind of pinstripe design. They got red with gray stripes. And they got a number there with kind of like a fade there with it. And it looks pretty cool. I, I like their uniforms. I also like kind of what the uniforms that Port Jeff are deploying out here today. Kind of that old classic baseball uniform style. As that one's rounded into the middle. Filippi going to pick that one up again. Gets that one over to first with that cannon of an arm to get the second out of the inning. Doing a really good job. Is Filippi. Kind of just shows off his range a little bit. That ball might not have been hit too far. Or too hard, sorry. But. Still was moving, and Flippy from that shortstop position got all the way over to make that play. It was really the only reason why that play was made, because Aronica, who was there, you know, you're not you're not really as confident in him making that play. His arm isn't obviously as good as Filippi's, so definitely important for Filippi to make that play. But now, Minichino up. We'll see if Rory's able to get this one, two, three in here. Another ground ball, this time to Owens. Owens firing over to first and gets the final out of the inning. So three ground outs and three batters for Rory there to get the inning over with. And now we head into bottom six. Still score 12-3 after Mount Sinai. Unable to put up any runs in that one. Let's call the game. Yes. Now at the bottom of the six, stepping up, Anthony Evangelista. Pops up to first, and the first baseman seals the first out. One pitch, one out for Reichenbach in the bottom of the six for Mount Sinai. Now stepping up the six hitter, Rory Rago. Rago grounded out and hit a single in his last two at-bats. Reichenbach deals and swings out a pitch in the dirt. Reichenbach throws his second pitch. Take the first ball. Count is one and one. And Rago follows through at another ball in the dirt for the second strike. He's going to have to recollect after two swings at balls in the dirt. Reichenbach throws the 1 2 for strike three looking. Number 44, Abby Rolf, steps up with two outs. No one on base. Reichenbach throws the 0-0 for a strike down the middle. Second pitch, another looking strike for Abby Rolf. She'll have to defend the plate. Takes a pitch in the dirt for 1-2. Swings at strike three. That's the end of the inning. Head to the top of the seventh inning. It's going to start with their number nine batter. First pitch to him. Popped up. <laughs> Into right field. Cipriano not able to make the play on that ball. They fired it into second. So that one drops in there. So he gets in there for single. And that's going to bring up the top of the order, which we're going to see a lot of subs here. Now as we head into the final at-bats of the game here for the Mustangs. Going to see a couple of substitute players. Don't really have their names in front of me. But this batter is wearing number three. First pitch to him was outside. Now Rory going to take a look back at the base runner at first. Probably not the biggest threat to steal, but 
Definitely want to make sure his lead isn't too far. That one. Swung and tipped for a foul. I don't know if you can hear it, Mount Sinai. Loving these substitute players when they get the chance to get in the game. Absolutely hyping them on. That next pitch lofted in there. Strike number one, or strike number two, sorry. See, Roy kind of lofting those pitches in. Definitely doesn't have a lot of speed behind it. But definitely getting strike calls. That one's ripped into left field, right in front of Abby Rolf for a single. So now runners are going to be on first and second with no outs here in the top of the seven. It's another pinch hitter for the Mustangs. And they are just unloading their bench the end of this game, kind of like how we saw when Port Jeff played Amityville in their last game, seeing that same thing here. This one, number eight. First pitch was fouled off. Strike number one. Next one, coming in. This one ripped into right center field, but Tommy able to make that play. The catch was made. No tags from any of the runners. So they're going to stay exactly where they are now with one out. Still runners on first and second. Out. Another substitute in. After that fly out, this one number 20, first pitch to him. It's outside for ball number one. Next pitch, that one's lofted. Flippy's going to easily catch that one. Didn't have too much power behind it. So Filippi gets the second out of the top of the seventh, which is going to bring up number 10 now to see if he can extend this game on the offensive side of thing for Mount Sinai. Obviously, Rory looking to complete his day with only letting up two runs. He's hoping he can get that one through. And it looks like Port Jeff is going to take out their seniors just to get them that last kind of curtain call, if you will. So it'll be Jaden Ketzeros coming in from Mount Sinai. And you hear it from everyone there. Cipriano coming off the field for the final time. Tommy Yost coming off the field for the final time. Just get them everything that they deserve. The emotion sets in now for those players as they... Walk out for the last time for the Royals. It's always a cool moment for those guys when that happens. So now we come back to the game. After the substitutions were made, first pitch to number 10. Was upstairs for a ball. As that one's ripped by Owens, the third baseman. So that's going to score a run, at least one run. He's going to get in. Ripped that right by the third baseman. Puts in another run here for the Mustangs as now they go up 13 to two. And it looks like they're not done as they're getting ready to rip things, rip through this and take this offensive momentum into the playoffs here. Definitely keeping the pedal on the gas even though they're using their substitute players. You're seeing that kind of offensive, really aggressive approach with these guys right here. 
So now we stay with two outs. Runners on first and second. After that single by number 10, next player up is number 11. So first two pitches to him, I believe are balls. A 2-0 count into number 11. There's still two outs in this inning. All runs love to get scored with two outs on this poor Jefferson team. We've seen it throughout the season. They pick him off over there at third. So they could have a run down between second and third. Luke Filippi going to use his speed to get him out right there. Just does it himself, not letting anything get out of his control. He finishes off, tags them out for the third out of the top of the seventh. They put on another run, but now Reichenbach going to see if he can get a complete game here. As we head into the bottom of the seventh, we're going to see last couple batters for the Royals, number eight and nine. They're going to head right back up to the top. So let's see if they're able to put any any more across as we head into the bottom seventh inning. We'll start at the bottom of the seventh. We start, like I said, number eight batter, Joey Aronica here, and he gets hit with the first pitch. So he's going to eat that one. Heads over to first, and now the last licks of the season. You're going to hear. Everything pour out from that poor Jeff bench as they're going to give it their all. Probably not going to come back in this game. But they definitely want to show up and show out in the final inning of their season. So it's going to bring up Dalia. First pitch to him outside, ball one. Next one, that one lifted up, first base side out of play, foul ball. For a strike on that one, to even up the count one and one, and Reichenbach just looking to finish off this game. They're probably going to have him finish off this game, pretty sure his pitching pitch count is as fine as it's going to be as that one gets by as they try to throw back to first. That one gets by the first baseman, but... Not far enough to where we're going to see Joey move from that base. He's going to stay there at first. And after Dalia, we're going to see the top of the order, Filippi, back up after his home run to see if can maybe put another exclamation point to the end of this season. That pitch upstairs, but... Dalia still swings at it and foul tips it off, but it does go into the glove for strike number two. No outs here. That one gets him with the off speed, but it's a drop third strike. The first base is occupied, but we are in the seventh inning, so it doesn't matter. So now Filippi is up. First pitch to him from Reichenbach. Went with an off speed. This time definitely doesn't want to challenge him again with a good fastball to take that one out just like he did last time. Now Ronica stationed at second. Reichenbach looks back at Ronica at second. Let me tell you, it's not the biggest threat to steal. Another off-speed pitch from the pitcher to Filippi. Definitely doesn't want to give him anything good to hit. And it's very obvious right here on how he wants to attack him. That one low this time, and Aronica's going to run over to the third with that pass ball. Catcher didn't expect him to do that. But now he's 90 feet away from scoring in the Royals' fourth run of this game. 3-1 is the count to number 12. 3-1 pitch. 
Coming in now at one. Drops that one in there for strike number two. Luke didn't really like the positioning of it. Didn't want to take a hack at it. Didn't have to. But now the count is full. Instantly back into that protective state. Is that one high inside? Takes his walk over to first. Now we go to number 10, Owens, with one out in this inning to see if he can continue and put on some more offense here for the Royals. First pitch to Owens, that one in there. Strike number one. Definitely going to see Reichenbach take a different approach to this batter. Not going to see him kind of throw that off speed like he did to Filippi to start things off. Just going to attack him with some fastballs. Next one. Another one in the strike zone. But Filippi takes off for second base. This time he's going to be safe in there. So the strike gets called on the pitch. Filippi safe at second base. Runners on second and third. One out here. Daniel Owens. The 0-2 count. And that one tried to get him with the off speed to finish off the batter. Owens smartly does not swing at it. Now one and two the count. Next one hits him with that change up to get Owens to strike out for the second out of the inning. And now... Grooney, one of our seniors, steps in for what will most definitely be his final at-bat as a Royal. First pitch into him. Off speed. Gets called in there for strike one. Royals down to their final out of the game. Final out of the season for them. Next pitch. That one's lifted foul. Third base side for strike number two. Now Gurney with an 0-2 count. Definitely does not want to finish out his high school baseball career with a strikeout, so we're definitely going to see him give it his all right here. Next pitch, high. That one doesn't offer ball number one. Reichenbach fires again. That one lifted into right field. Right field, they're going to camp right under it, and he catches it for the final out of the inning, final out of the game, and final out of the season for the Port Jeff Royals. They lose this one at a score of 13-3. to <laughs> that's, that's the season. It's been an absolute honor to do play-by-play -play for these guys throughout the year. And I've enjoyed every single moment that I was able to do it. And I hope all the kids that got to you know feature on, you know, get a, an inning in here, get an inning there, hope they had fun as well. But now, all we can do is look to the future of this team and hope for the best for the kids that we saw. But my name, for the last time, my name is Gabe Zoda with your Port Jeff play-by-play. -play. And until next season, we'll see you guys next time.